Most of my projects have had some sort of backstory and meaning behind them, even if they were a joke. But this time, to be honest, I just wanted to build a pond. Growing up, there weren't as many options for gaming like today. And honestly, even the games changed. They shifted from pure fun to money-making machines, which is why I stuck to playing the same old games that I used to play back in the day on my iPod Touch. From all the options, the best games were definitely the defusal games. You would have a limited time before Boom Boom, and a complicated puzzle to figure out within that amount of time. It's something you can play with friends or even compete in. And at the end of the day, you would still leave learning something that you can transfer to real life. I've got a bunch that I could recommend, but the one that I always came back to was Circuit Scramble. It wasn't too complicated, it looked awesome, and it also had an endless mode where it generated puzzles on the spot so you would never do the same one twice. And for some reason, it's gone. So we're gonna build a real life one that they can't take away from us. Minus the boom boom. The plan is to make a realistic copy of this game. It would be really easy to connect a bunch of LEDs to a microcontroller, but that's not what this is about. Circuit Scramble makes puzzles using logic gates. If you haven't heard of them, that's all right. They're really simple. Logic gates are the building blocks of every electronic thing around us. They take in inputs, and depending on the type of gate, they might send out an output. In electronic circuits, we have a power supply and electronics that feed from it. Logic gates work the same way. It's just another electronic we are feeding with power. We're going to stick to three types of logic gates. And, XOR and OR. AND gates require both inputs to be on to send power out. If one is on and one is off, it will not work. If both are off, same thing. XOR gates, which stands for exclusive OR gates, requires that one input has to be exclusively on while the other has to be off. Anything else will not work. OR gates are a mashup of the last two. It requires either gate to be on exclusively or that both be on together. Anything else will not work. I had an idea for the design, but I wanted to test it out first. And honestly, I think it looks pretty shitty. It doesn't reflect the real deal, and it just looks very cheap. One of the reasons it looks shitty is because I used an FDM printer, which works like a hot glue gun on rails. It melts plastic as it's moving around and lays it down layer by layer. FDM printers can get nice prints, but they are limited. You can only get so thin before it takes weeks to print something basic. To fix that, we're going to use a total different method of printing called resin printing. Resin printers also print something from nothing. but in Instead of using rolls of plastic, they use liquid chemicals. You can use non-toxic resins, but there are also some that can be really dangerous. If you didn't notice, all these chemicals are inside blacked out bottles. And that's because they're all sensitive to UV light, which can come from a lot of places like the sun. Ah! My God! These printers have four main parts. The main base, which holds electronics and the UV light, the LCD screen that acts like a mask, the tub that holds the resin, and the bed which moves up and down. When the resin wants to print a super thin layer, it lowers the bed into the tub of resin at the desired height. Then the LCD opens up to the desired shape, blocking light in certain spots, but being transparent in others, which the UV light shines right through until it hits the liquid and solidifies it. Then the bed rises and repeats for the rest of the print. This method lets us print a whole layer at a time instead of one point at a time, layer by layer. So something as simple as this will take us a quarter of the time to print on our resin printer, all while maintaining that crazy resolution. Now that we have a general prototype, we can make a level from our long lost game. We wanted to make a random level from the game, but to keep the design dynamic so that we can always rearrange a couple things and print another level. So first off, we need a cover for each gate. These will represent which gate the power is going into. The cover inside of it will have LEDs that light up to show if it's on or off. We'll also need the level complete sign at the end with LEDs inside that too. Then we just have to print a body panel to house it all, add some lines to define cable paths, and some adjustable button slot. Then if you want to print a different level, just move things around. For colors, it's pretty simple. We've got green, red, black, gray, and yellow. Then we just have to batch them together by color thanks to this awesome resin printer. And a couple hours later, we have a bunch of hardened parts that we could start putting together. Originally, I printed this body panel with very specific settings, but something happened and it failed at the end. And I've tried two more times, but it just hasn't come out right. But since we have no more time, we're gonna have to go with the shitty one and just find a way to make it look nice. 
After removing all the parts from the printer, you have to clean them with alcohol and then cure them in the special machine. So now we have all our parts and we can start putting it together. This is what it looks like without any of the electronics or LEDs inside of it. Quite a difference from our prototype. Building the electronics was pretty boring, but here's how it looks under the hood. On the left is our picture of the level we picked. All the yellow cables represent the switches we're about to add. So a little bit of soldering and then just wiring in all the switches and lights. And here's what we got. Lastly, we just need to add a power supply and it should turn on. Unfortunately, there's no timer or boom boom for this one, but I still attempted at beating it myself. If you'd like, stop the video here and see if you could figure it out on the paper on the side and then compare your results to mine. To be honest, a couple things didn't really come out like I wanted to. I had to use some hot glue and it kind of makes it look like a grade two art piece. But it's still pretty cool that this is the genuine thing from the game in real life without explosives. I have it set up that there's LEDs inside each one of these casings so that when you press a button, it shows you the path electricity is going through. So we're going up here, into here, and on. So let's do it and let's see if we can figure it out. I've never done this before. I never looked at the instructions on how to beat it. This is all natural. So we know that we have an OR gate here and an OR gate here. So we only have to press one of the two buttons here and one of the two buttons here. So this one will turn it on, this one will turn it on, doing both will turn it on. This one will turn it on, this one will turn it on. Doing both will turn it on. Then we have our XOR gates. So this one will only activate with one getting power. So if we switch the, the polar switch to the left so that both inputs going into the XOR is going on, this will turn it on and this will turn it off. We can also switch our polar switch to the right and now the power will go from here to the right into the middle. Same thing here, we can turn this to the left that will turn it on, that will turn it on, doing both will turn it off because it needs one of them to be on, but never both. Then we have our AND gate. So to do that, we're going to have to turn on our OR gate, which is either one of these. And we're gonna have to switch our polar switch to the right to go inside the AND gate. So right now it's off, it's off, it's on. If I close our OR gate, it turns off. So we need two buttons pressed just to get out of here, we need one button for this, one button for that. We just need one button to open the, that OR gate and only one button to open that XOR gate. So then we can focus this polar switch into the middle. So instead of putting it left, we can put it right. Then we can press this and we open up our middle gate. So we have one button here, one button here, and half of the map is already done. To open our AND gate, we're going to need two buttons, one to open the OR gate and then one to go and open the AND gate. So now we can do this one, this one, and this one, which is going to open these two. And when we do all four, it should beat the level. Boom. So that's how we do it. If any of these get misplaced, the level won't work. I hope you learned something, and if you did, subscribe to the channel to see more cool stuff. You can always unsubscribe later, and it doesn't cost anything. See you next week.